My name is Art Simons, and I started in RCA Camden in 1966, immediately after graduating from the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I worked in Camden for a few summers uh, while I was going uh, to graduate school and, and also at RCA Morristown, and then I came back full-time in 1971 to RCA Morristown. I worked there for a few years, came down to Camden on loan in 1975, and never left. Retired in 2008. And when you started, what was your first job assignment? Uh, I worked, uh, I guess my first significant job assignment uh, was Aegis. Uh, it, started, it was called MFAR uh, in the early days, probably pre-proposal. -pre uh, but uh, I had some very interesting summertime assignments uh, working on Aegis. And then uh, after I came back and worked full time, I did some analytical work in support of Aegis and a few other radar programs. I think uh, one was called BATS. And uh, then I went down in, to Camden and worked on secure communications. Mm -hmm. um, when you started work, did you have any mentors or senior engineers or anything? Actually, uh, that was one of the, the hallmarks of my entire 42-year uh, career at RCA is that there was always somebody uh, who was willing to help, anxious to help, and more than capable of helping. Uh, so in the early days uh, in uh, Morristown, uh, my mentors were uh, Tom Bolger and uh, Maurice Timken and John Dodson and, of course, Jimmy Sullivan. And uh, Frank Papasso was my boss during those summer jobs, and he, he was fantastic as well. And then I, had, I was fortunate I had mentors uh, throughout my entire career. Mm -hmm. um, talk about some major projects that you did work on. Uh, well, I guess some of the more significant ones were the uh, KY-57 and KY-58 secure communications gear. Uh, that was my, really my first assignment when I uh, went, went to Camden. And then from there, I moved uh, to uh, Maroon Archer, which was a very large uh, job in the intelligence community. And in fact, uh, that was a significant uh, point of my career because uh, we created a business area uh, out of the Maroon Archer program. And many of us from Moorestown who were on loan to Camden ended up uh, transferring to Camden full time uh, because of that business. And frankly, uh, it kept me in the business, in, uh, in the engineering business uh, for the rest of my career. I found it fascinating. Another major job that I worked on that I uh, really enjoyed was uh, the Dindi program, which we did for the government of Israel. And it was not only a fascinating job uh, technically, but it was also an interesting job sociologically because the uh, condition of the contract was that we had to have uh, Israeli engineers as part of our team. And to see the interaction between the RCA engineers and the Israeli engineers was uh, very, very interesting. We even had a Hebrew class, and I always found it amusing that the 60-year-old uh, uh, sec Irish secretaries were taking Hebrew lessons after work. Uh, and another uh, program that I worked on that I uh, really enjoyed that was a, a great program with great engineers was uh, Nerve Trunk which I worked on in the 1990s in Camden. Mm -hmm. And of course, there were many others, a lot of proposals. Now, you worked your way pretty much up the engineering ladder. How did that go? Well, uh, it was a hallmark of the engineering community back then that if you did well in engineering, they tended to promote you within the engineering community, but they were always on the lookout for management. Uh, which was a two-sided coin because the best engineers don't always necessarily make the best managers. And so for a long time, I really resisted going into management because I really felt that I was uh, technical and there were better technical people than me. But eventually I matured and I realized that I could manage well and I agreed to do it. And in 1979, I went into management uh, first as a leader and then as a uh, uh, department manager. Eventually, I ended, ended up as the director of systems engineering. Uh, and throughout my entire career, I was encouraged and supported by uh, a host of people at RCA, which I thought was uh, 
really one of the things I look back on as one of the most significant aspects of my career at RCA is that there was always somebody there to help. Mm-hmm. Talk about your coworkers through your career. Well, I always thought it was kind of unusual, and I, I really can't speak for other companies because RCA is and its descendants were the only companies that I ever worked for. But I, I always had the feeling that RCA was uh, very, very unique. Uh, it was really uh, more of a family than uh, a job. I, I really enjoyed the people I worked with. I had a great deal of respect for their engineering ability and their intellect, and uh, they were always uh, there to help you out. And uh, I think it's one of the major reasons why I enjoyed myself so much. It's, uh, for me personally, it's not only important to have challenging work, which there always was an interesting work uh, and uh, a, a great work environment, but the people that we worked with were uh, exceptional. Mm-hmm. And that was important to me, and uh, I appreciated that. It's interesting. The term RCA family has come up almost every one of our I'm not. I'm not surprised. In fact, uh, I still get together with RCA people of various ages uh, in three different lunch groups and a fourth group that's mostly RCA people. Uh, we, we were close when we worked together and we're close in retirement. Mm-hmm. What about um, outside of work? Uh, outside of work, uh, of course, family was most important to me. I ha- uh, have a wife and two wonderful children, and now I have three grandchildren. Uh, I was always participating in various sports. I played a lot of softball, a lot of basketball, and uh, played a little bit of bridge when I first started at RCA at lunch. Uh, didn't really play a lot for years, but now that I'm retired, uh, I, pl- I play serious bridge often. Go to tournaments, and uh, I really enjoy it. Do you recall any of the RCA parties? <laughs> uh, some of them are hard to blot out. Uh, yes, I do. I recall, <laughs> recall them very well. Uh, we had great Christmas parties, uh, and uh, we also had a lot of uh, fun completion parties when jobs were over and we were really uh, thrilled to deliver a system. We had some uh, really uh, wonderful completion parties with the customer that were uh, were a lot of fun, but I think I enjoyed most of all was the, was were the Christmas parties uh, uh, because you know I, I could bring my wife and she got to meet uh, other people that I work with and their spouses, so that that was fun. Mm-hmm. What was the best thing about working for RCA? I think the best thing about it was that it kept me intellectually engaged. About a week before I retired, a young fellow stopped me in the hallway and said to me, well, you're retiring. And I said, yes. And he said, well, what about the work? What about the work? So I said to him, I said, well, I have to tell you that the work was always very challenging. It was always very, very interesting. It was often patriotic. And that was enough to sustain me for 42 years. Uh, I toyed with the idea of becoming a lawyer uh, before I went to uh, graduate school in engineering. And even in the early days when I worked at RCA, when we uh, unfortunately had a series of layoffs, I thought a lot about becoming a lawyer. But the work always kept me there, and I have no regrets whatsoever. What was the worst thing about working for RCA? The layoffs. The, absolutely the layoffs. Uh, I, uh, I started working at RCA in 1966, and I was going back and forth to, to graduate school, and the They were having a series of layoffs uh, during that period of time in the late 60s. And I came back in August of 71, and they had the last layoff in uh, December, right before Christmas of 1971. And it was was horrible. It really was. And I think psychologically that's one of the reasons why I uh, resisted becoming a manager. Just the thought of having to lay somebody off was just uh, really uh, unthinkable to me. People have speculated that RCA changed South Jersey. Have you anything to say on that? Well, I think RCA was a a, a significant part of South Jersey. Uh, My father-in-law, well, my in-laws got married in 1944, and they immediately moved from New York to South Jersey. My father-in-law worked for RCA for many, many years in material standards. And you couldn't go anywhere in South Jersey and not run into somebody who either worked at RCA, whose spouse worked at RCA, whose uncle worked at RCA, everybody worked at RCA. There were a lot of people who worked in Camden, 
And uh, I, I think uh, it, it is part and parcel of the fabric of South Jersey. If you're talking about South Jersey, you know, you have to consider the impact of RCA. You uh, mentioned that the work was challenging. Did you feel that the work was valued by your supervisors? I always felt like that they appreciated what I did. I, I, re I, really, I don't think I ever, in 42 years, ever had a supervisor who didn't appreciate what I did and what, and what my coworkers did. And just to extend that a little bit, very often we would have visitors from the government, very high-level people, uh, both in the military and in the government, come and thank us for what we did and, and tell us that we were saving lives. And, uh, you know, you could be a cool customer, but when someone tells you that, it's really meaningful. Yeah. Um, how do you think RCA was looked at in the customer community and uh, in the rest of industry? I think with a great deal of respect. Uh, I don't think we were ever the cheapest uh, in our proposals. We had a lot of competitors, so I think, who were capable of underbidding us. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the reasons for it. Maybe the high-priced talent like myself, I'm not sure. But we, had, we, we won a lot of programs because the government knew that we delivered really fine systems that worked. And if you mentioned the fact in government hallways that you worked for RCA, it definitely had an impact. So I, I was always proud to work for RCA. So how would you sum up your career? Just a job, a good journey, how would you sum it up? Definitely not just a job. It was, uh, it, it was uh, an important part of helping me raise my family successfully. We've, we've had a wonderful life because of RCA. I enjoyed every minute I spent there. Uh, I, I, as I said, it was intellectually challenging and, and that was important to me. And I met a lot of people that I really, really care for. So uh, I couldn't have been happier with my decision and more thankful that RCA hired me in 66 and when I, for a summer job. And when I told them I was going to graduate school, they said, we don't care. Go to graduate school. You can come back every summer. And uh, that's when the marriage started. Cool. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of pride come out. Um, Pride in the work. Uh, talk about also the effect of the work on our country. Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for uh, 30 plus years, I worked in the intelligence community. And uh, obviously, you can't go into a lot of detail about that. But uh, I tended to be uh, politically more liberal than most of my coworkers. And People who were, who thought like I did, didn't necessarily work for places like RCA. But I was not only, you know, liberal in my political thinking, but I was, I think, a practical person, and I, I certainly didn't believe in unilateral disarmament. And I really believed that what we did in the intelligence community was what an, a smart country interested in doing good, both here and around the world, should be doing. And so uh, I think that what we did had a major impact in the country. I felt proud to be part of it. And I still think that it's an important component of keeping us safe.